Yeah, what is going on, New York? Welcome back to another episode of Nick Synonymous, and I must say the one and only Nick Synonymous. Episode oh. non Trey. Non Trey 93, baby. You already know on our way climbing to the 100 mark. Stevie, we are still in the game. We are of still course, bro. here. And we are not leaving. We are not leaving. We're still here. Shout out to the Knicks Anonymous family who's also still here with us and even to the newcomers. Um, shout out to everybody who's been showing us love on social media, which you can find us at Stevie. Ah, uh, oh, I didn't think you were going to jump into that so early. Oh, okay. Uh, follow us on Instagram at Nick Anonymous. Follow us on Twitter at Nick Anonymous. Spelled K N I C K Z Anonymous. That's K N I C K Anonymous on Twitter. Uh, TikTok, Nick's Anonymous as well, spelled regular. Uh, you can go to our website, nicksanonymous.com. And you can also find us on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, Pandora, Spotify, and Breaker. Yes, sir. And just in case you didn't get all that, you can either A, rewind it, or B, go down in the description below and click the links down below. How easy is that? Uh, so usually, yeah, usually I don't get into that so early because I forget. So, so this time I wanted to do it early, so I didn't forget. And I want to keep, I hear you. I hear keep you. things smooth, crisp, and clean because this is what we're here for. We're here for smooth, crisp, clean content. Shout out to everybody showing us love again, man. It's getting serious now. We are building a community. We actually have a group chat open now that we are slowly inviting people in. Uh, it's called the Nick Zone right now. Fun fact, the Nick Zone was actually going to be the name of Nick's Anonymous. Before Originally, Nick's- yes. Before we decided on Nick's Anonymous, we were going to be called the official Nick Zone, actually. The official Nick Zone. And the, the Nick Zone part was inspired... By the Twilight Zone. <laughs> yeah, I think we I think we mentioned that on another on a past episode. We had a cheesy we had an idea for a cheesy beginning and everything. Thank God we didn't do it. <laughs> like it was gonna it was gonna, like the, it was gonna like be just like the I don't know if for those of you that haven't seen the Twilight Zone the intro it has like the the uh what's it the hypnotizing thing that spins around and then the, the I know what you're talking about I don't know what to call it but I know what you're talking about you know what I mean and then the title comes in spinning that's that's how our intro was gonna be. Ooh, thank God we didn't go that direction. <laughs> thank God for me too. Actually, my apologies for the sounds in New York right now. I don't know if y'all can hear that in the mic, but FDNY and going crazy right now. As usual, though, welcome to the city of New York. <laughs> yeah. Um. So okay. So today's episode, on a very serious note, is a dedication episode. Uh, for those of you that don't know, the great captain. Willis Reed passed away last week at the age of 80. Prayers up to his family. Prayers up to, you know, my condolences to everybody around him. That is definitely something that hurts the soul, you know. Um, but today we actually wanted to celebrate his life because he was actually, if not the greatest, one of the greatest Knicks to be a Nick. Basically, yeah, the, they didn't call, he they didn't call him the captain for a reason, uh, and according to Clyde Frazier, you know, it just happened. You know, they they didn't just decide it; it just it just it just went down, and he became the captain, which I guess shows great leadership skills on his part, and he must have been a hell of a ball player and a person, uh, man. To be loved by many, that's a, that's a, that's like a heroic trait, you know what I mean? And speaking of heroic heroicism, you know, he was even considered to be the hero of new york you know what i mean like the first superhero of new york almost was he really that's what's up i didn't know that because you know like the perfect superhero trait right is i'm gonna be on my anime stuff right now so shout out to my anime people out there the the hero traits is your most powerful trait is how you affect other people so the the more kind of, like you know there's certain traits that superheroes have that attract people to them and the more people they have supporting them is the more powerful they get so willis reed was indeed the people's champion 
a hundred percent. And it showed in a very important way, which we're going to get into. But first things first, let's get the basics out the way. We're going to start with the accolades of the great Willis Reed. Um, first things first, he's a Hall of Famer. He was inducted in 1982. No question. Yeah, I was there. born. Is it really? Yeah. He was, oh. indu- he was inducted into the Hall of Fame the year I was born. Good stuff. Oh, man. Steve, you got greatness in you. Yeah. I can dig it. <laughs> that's fine. That's dope, actually. That's good. That's a good flex. <laughs> um, okay, he was a seven-time All-Star, and he won MVP once. The only in MVP in the history of the Knicks, actually. 1970. Good stuff. That's and awesome. Not, and no coincidence, that same year, they won their first championship. Uh, and then they won another one in 72. So he's a two-time champion. So he's a two-time champion, seven-time uh, all-star hall of famer he has one season mvp two finals mvp oh he won both finals mvp i didn't know that i thought he only won i thought he only won the first one he won both finals uh all nba first team once all nba second team four times all defensive first team once rookie of the year uh an all rookie first team and yes, he was, the, he was the first Nick rookie of the year. We it's understandable. Correct. It's understandable he didn't make um that many All NBA first teams because you know he he had to compete with guys like Will and Bill Russell. So that's understandable. I can dig that. There's no 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 shame in that. But still, er- everything else stacked on top of each other like that. That's a great resume. And a young Kareem as well. Not for nothing. He had to deal with those guys. And and mind you, mind you. Those guys, aside from Russell, um, Will and Kareem towered over him. They were seven footers. Russell was six nine. I mean, excuse me, Willis Reed was six nine. Oh, so Russell was six nine as well giants. too. But I don't think he went against Reed as much, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. You know, I wasn't around back then, so I may have my. As far as Russell goes, I'm not sure, but I know he definitely went against Will and Kareem. That's some David and Goliath stuff right there. And honestly, it makes these accolades much more impressive. You know what I mean? Exactly. He got these things against guys like that. So shout out to Willis Reed, man, for, you know, completely bowling out. There were other bigs as well. Guys like Wes Unseld, too. Um, I believe Artis Gilmore. But, um, yeah, it was a lot of – it was some big man competition back then. You know what I mean? And Willis was not the biggest. The so biggest he was, heart. yeah, exactly. He was all heart. He was all heart. He was tough. But then you know, I guess you could. Um, he was at his height. You can kind of argue he was playing out of position, because that's more of a power forward's height. But then again, this is back then. And Wes Unseld, get this: Wes Unseld was a six-seven center. So yeah. It's kind of it was kind of weird back then, but um, back to the captains. So it was kind of it was kind of it was kind of just a bunch of variety of different things going on. Yeah, yeah, the competition at Central was kind of crazy back then. You know, there they had a. That, so I guess it comes error. down. I guess it comes down to athletics, right? Athleticism. I'm assuming if that's what it comes down to, because because Willis Reed was super athletic. I feel like that's what it, that's like the main reason why he was doing the damage that he was doing, or able to do against guys bigger than him. I would say more so toughness, dude. Because if you're a guy six nine and you're killing guys that big, yeah, you got to be a tough guy. Captain. I would say I'm not doubting the athleticism, not doubting that. I'm just saying I, I would I would attribute that more to the toughness than I would the athleticism. I would agree. Be tough. I can agree to that. You got to, because bro, if you look at Will and Kareem back then, those were like freakishly big guys, and he was dealing with them. You know, I mean, Artis Gilmore as well. So as impactful as Willis Reed was on the court, right? Statistically, you know, naturally because he led us, he was one of the main pieces to lead us to the championship, right? He was also just as impactful off the court, meaning inspirational wise and leadership wise. He he lit the flame under his guys to get the job done. As and any captain should. As any captain should. And 
one of the most iconic moments of Willis Reed is the tunnel, the infamous tunnel. And it's actually in our old, because we don't have an intro no more because we have like the commercials and stuff like that. But in our intro, we actually had the broadcast of when the reporter was like, I, th- I think we see Willis coming out the tunnel. Yeah, I think we see Willis coming down now. the crowd cheering. And the okay, so a little context to that, right? And I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna bring the floor to Stevie because Stevie got he's he's very passionate about this. So basically, he got hurt game six, day five, uh, day five, game, game five, and he was questionable for game seven, right? No one knew what was going on. Everybody was holding their breath. They said you could pretty much hear a pin drop in the garden. Like, everybody was just concerned of what was going to happen with Willis Reed, right? Uh, The Lakers, who they were up against, were feeling good about themselves. You know what I mean? You know, they just lost their best player. You know, and, you know, you get a little bit of confidence. You know what I mean? You know. They smacked, not to mention, they smacked the Knicks game six without Willis Reed. So they're feeling good right now. They they they're in they're in the rhythm, right? So they're actually the reporters are actually talking about how the doctors are treating him, and I believe they even said they gave him like a, a shot of cortisone. I think it was. Yeah, in his knee. In his knee. So they was doing everything they can to get this man back on the court, and I'm pretty sure he was the one forcing them to do that. I'm pretty sure he was the one, like, yo, get me in this game. You know what I mean? So put the needle in me, doc. Yeah, I like, need to play. He was on he that kind of time. He probably did it himself. Like, you know what I mean? Like, give me the needle. I'll do it. <laughs> okay, so that happens, right? We, whatever happens in the background, that happens. What happens? This man waddles his way out this tunnel. <laughs> and when he waddles out that tunnel, because I, I saw the doc. I don't know if you saw the documentary on the. The, the Knicks. They did a, a little documentary on MSG, like a special. Oh, did they? Yeah. So, yeah, I like the law. I think it's called the Lost Files. I think seventy-one Lost Files, something like that. It's pretty good. And they described the roar of the Garden like nothing no one has ever heard before. They said it was so powerful that you could. You know how like you know how like music. You feel a bass in your soul. You feel like the the rhythm, like in your in your body. They said it was almost something to of that level of magnitude of just pure raw passion and excitement. And they said it was so bad that when Willis Reed came uh, went came out, even the Lakers stopped. Yeah, they was like, they, I heard about that. And I, I didn't see this part in the documentary you're talking about, but I have seen past documentaries. And they said like, like the reaction like the Lakers had was like, their, I guess you could say their jaws literally dropped, and at they that didn't, they time, didn't shoot. they stopped their shoot around completely just yeah. to see what what he was gonna do. Not only that, as that was happening, and the Knicks noticed, like the other Knicks noticed, like their jaws dropped. That's when they knew it was like, oh, we got them. We're gonna win this game. We got this. Just just because of his presence, dude. That's leadership. That's leadership. If you really want to, you really that's, want that's to get some, that's, to that's some superhero stuff right there. I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. You know, as a matter of fact, we we talked about this. That's a movie. That's some movie stuff. Like they got to make a movie about that. Watch this. I don't know if you remember, but in episode one, the very first this dated Nick history was us talking about the Willis Reed moment. Nice. And what did I say? They should make a Disney movie out of this. You can even, bro. You can even go back. And you can play that clip back this week if you want to and put it on Instagram. We can do that. <laughs> first episode, I kid you not. We talked about that and we said this is the movie that you, this is like one of those inspirational Disney movie moments. And that's exactly what that was. It was it was so inspirational that we actually whipped their ass. And before we even get to that, let's just we're not done yet. It doesn't stop there. So at this point, he's out of the tunnel, you know. The I'm Lakers. Trying the, I'm trying to get the final score of that game. No, you're good. The Lakers. Oh, got it. 113.99. The Lakers stopped their shoot around. So at this point, they are all zoomed in on this one man. And 
Bernard King. I said Bernard King. Willis Reed. <laughs> I don't know why I said Bernard King. Willis Reed takes two warm-up shots, hits both shots, and each shot, the crowd reaction was louder, as if it was a real game going on in the warm-up. So at this point, the atmosphere that talk about a home. This this is the definition of a home field advantage. That's a or fact. Home, home court advantage. This is the definition. Like you have the entire you have the mecca of basketball, Madison Square Garden on your back, supporting you, cheering you on. And that fed into the Knicks and Clyde Frazier had a wicked game that game. Probably and, one of the greatest game sevens of all time, actually. And he put the chip on his back, and he stepped up to the plate, and he, yo, he locked, he locked it down for the Knicks, and we won. And it was all due to that man coming out that tunnel. Oh, you forgot to mention he actually hit the first two shots in the game too. So yeah, you, it was just meant to be. That, that was, was a, the, that's a miracle movie moment. And you know Angels what's crazy? In outfield. Um. <laughs> You know what was crazy? Right, you know what? I'm going to ask a question. Even though you didn't witness that moment, nah, you were I wasn't even I, I was even thought of, bro. I wasn't either. I was, I, I, I was 12 years later, so I wasn't I even th- how, how old was my dad? He was like 12, right? Something like that. My father was 12. So your father was a little younger. It's so like nine. Maybe nine or eight, I would eight? say. Oh, my goodness. So, Yeah. I was going to ask, all right, even though you didn't witness it, we obviously weren't born. What does that moment mean to you? Um, okay, so I'm glad you asked that because I was actually enjoying doing the research for this episode because, I, you know, I knew about Willis Reed, but I didn't know about Willis Reed. You know what I mean? Like, And what I mean by that is the impact he had. I was more moved about his, like, his his leadership role not so much his because his statistics he was not i'm not gonna say average but he was he was pretty good he wasn't the greatest but he was hey, good pretty, he had pretty modest career numbers um hold on let me see if i can get that real quick i'm sorry i should, I would, should have had that I, I apologize for that so i feel like his his most important trait is his his leadership aspect to the team and how he's the guy that holds everybody accountable and holds everybody together you know, and and to back it up, he was a, a good player. I'm not saying he's a bad. Listen, I did not listen. It wasn't a diss, everybody. Listen, I don't want I don't want hate tweets. I don't want any of that. Okay, no, I, just just to put it in perspective, he had pretty modest numbers. Like looking at it, like at numbers wise, he had pretty modest numbers in today's standards. Average 18 points, 12 boards, uh, shot 47 percent from the field overall. You know, that's not. I'm not saying that's bad. Actually, if if you told me my center would average that for his career, I would gladly take that. It's seven time All Star worthy. All right, let's put it like that. And he has okay. two championships. So. Two championships. Yeah. But, Hello. So, okay. <laughs> yes. I just feel like his better trait is the leadership. It, the leadership aspect of him. I feel like that's what makes Willis Reed Willis Reed. And what spoke to me the most is just how he's able to move everybody into being the best version of themselves. I feel like that's that's amazing because I feel like without that moment, Clyde Frazier doesn't have the game seven he has, you know, because they were they were they were also in disarray. They also were, you know, your best players out. Now we got to figure out a game plan. Now he steps out on the court and now I'm inspired to help him get this win. And like you said, he hit the first two shots of the game. So he definitely set the tempo. Yep. So after that, it's over. Now Clyde is locked in, turned all the way up and does what he does you know so how about you steve what does what does that moment mean to you uh in all honesty it kind of shows me that sometimes the team with the best players doesn't win because um not to say that or that, that was a great team that was a great Knicks team can't that's one of the best teams of all time can't say that's not especially like as far as team ball goes they're up there but they were going up you know will we're going up against Jerry West. We're going up against Elgin Baylor. You know, those are that's those a are dudes that's, that's, that that's, like that's, that's, they're going against a hundred point man and the literal logo of the NBA. Exactly, bro. Like <laughs> that's tough. And Elgin Baylor's nothing to slouch at neither. Those who know basketball know like Elgin Baylor's up there is one of the greatest wings ever. Um, 
and one of the greatest Lakers ever. You know, he, if you talk to a, a real Laker fan, they'll tell you about Elgin Bella. Um, so yeah, sometimes the team with the that has the best players doesn't always win. Sometimes it's about teamwork, about toughness, and as you said, leadership, and and wanting it more. And you know, as a player, he wanted it more, especially in these playoffs. But we'll get into that in a minute because. <laughs> Everybody, unless we get into it, unless we get into it now. Yeah, we yeah, we slowly, we transition to it. You can do that. Okay, you know what? Let's do this, bro. Because, like, and there's no disrespect to the tunnel moment. Because that is one of the greatest moments ever. But, like, dude, I, I did some research on these NBA, on the NBA playoffs for the 70s. Um, Didn't there know is. it was only, I didn't know it was only three rounds back in the days. It's round one, the Eastern Finals and the Finals, from what I saw. Um... Uh, There's a reason his numbers in the rafters. Yeah, bro. Like <laughs> I looked at these numbers and and he went against some good competition too. Round one, he played against the um the Baltimore Bullets at the time. Now they're the Washington Wizards. Wow. Um. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um. <clears throat> that's a good trivia question. Um. Excuse me. Sorry about that. That's definitely game night questions right there. Um, and in round one, we went up. That was a good team, too. They had Wes Unsell, Gus Johnson, and and plot twist. They had Earl the Pearl Monroe. Uh-huh. Oh, this, was this was before he was on. This was he was he was on the 73 team. Pearl wasn't on the 70 team. We went yeah. against him that series. Uh, bro. Round one, he averaged 21 points, 17 boards. That's killer. That's and, crazy. Two and two assists versus West Unsailed in what looked like a very um hard fought series because it did go seven games. Mind you, in the seventh game, again, West Unsailed, Hall of Fame center. Will this read out played him? 14 points, 14 boards, three assists. Held West Unsailed to two points, one of eight shooting That's in the dope. deciding in the deciding game. Let's talk about it. Ooh, clutch. And it honestly, he was actually he. He was the definition of a clutch player, too. Um, he would actually average more than his um, season average in the playoffs. So he would average, so like, let's say he was averaging 20 points in, in the regular season. He would average like 25 in the playoffs. Oh, it gets better. I'm glad you brought that up. I'm so glad you brought that up. Oh, and fun fact, in this in this series against the... Um, the, the uh, Sorry, kind of hype talking about. No, we're getting this. excited. I feel that. I feel that. Yeah, yeah, bro. Because like I didn't know his numbers were this serious. Like, well, get the I'm energy looking up. At this, because, like, wow. Get the um, energy up because moving forward after this is hell on earth. You know, we are gonna get to that. Oh yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> dude, he had a 36-36 game, thirty-six points, thirty-six rebound game. What the hell, dude? In the Say, playoffs, one more time. One more time. One more time. Thirty-six points, thirty-six rebounds. That's killer, bro. In round one, he averaged 21, 17, and 2, as I said. Remember that. Next round. 36. So 21, 17, 2. Remember that. Next round, East Finals, Milwaukee Bucks, led by who? Kareem. At the time, his name was Lou Alcindor. Uh, Kareem put up numbers that series, bro. He, I bet. I'm, talking about, I'm talking about some all-time numbers. I don't want to get into his numbers, but go look them up. He, yeah. Naturally. Any other, on any other playoff, that he, they would have the chip with those numbers. It's crazy, <laughs> but dude, that's who Willis just, Reed beat. That's crazy. It's yeah, exactly. We beat him. It, it just wasn't enough. It just wasn't. You know, what I mean, our team was that good, but Willis cooked that series too. But here's his numbers. By the way, the Knicks beat them four to one. Oh, we spanked them. And I think, and from what I was looking at in the stats in Game Two. Him and Kareem had like a little, I guess, a battle. Some beef. Yeah, because check out their numbers, their head to head numbers. Kareem had a triple double 38, 23, and 11. Oh my God. Yeah, it's crazy, right? That's insane. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> um, oh my God. Willis, Willis Reed's numbers weren't too shabby neither 36, 19, and two assists. But, you know, that wasn't enough. They won the game. But the point is, we beat them four to one. Here's his numbers. Remember when you said he raises his game? As the season goes, round one, remember 21, 17, and two. Round two, 27, 12, three. 
all three numbers went up all across the board. That's clutch. On our way to Big the C's. finals. That's clutch. That's on our way clutch. to the finals. Um, before he got hurt in game five, listen to his numbers. Raised his numbers again. This time he OD. 31 points, 15 boards. Bought his assist numbers 0. 0.7 to 3.7. So now he's looking. Now he's for not see. Now he's making his teammates better. That's crazy. He's evolving as he plays. Like exactly. But check this out. Check out Wilt's numbers. This ain't nothing too shabby. To, nothing too shabby either for the first four games versus Willis. He was averaging 18, 24, and four. 24. Yeah, it's OD. A lot of rebounds. It's a lot of rebounds. And I say that to say this: the two games Willis got hurt because when he got hurt in game five, he only played eight minutes. Only eight minutes. Man, he dropped 45 and 27 boards. Yeah, right? <laughs> like, it's insane. So why we, is a center putting up that many? Bro, why is a center doing that? We'll, we'll, we'll take a little bit of else. Why was a center doing that, bro? Why was a center scoring 45 points? But check it out. I bring that up to bring this up. In the, three, in the games against Willis, again, he only averaged 18, 24, and 4. His numbers went up when Willis didn't play. Oh, to 30, I bet. To 33, well, the rebounds went down one. His points went up almost almost double to 33. So, yeah, that made a big difference. That, that speaks that, volume. That tells you a lot, bro. <laughs> that speaks volume within itself. <laughs> um, Damn, what, that's what crazy. Could, what, what could you say about this man? And that's, one, that, and that's one of the greatest to play the game. Exactly, dude. And we, he went through that. That's a difficult playoff run, despite the fact that they were short only one, that they were short run round. Because it's four rounds now. It's round one, round two, the East Finals or the West Finals, and then the Finals. Back okay. then it was three. That's still a difficult route. That's still a difficult route to the championship. I don't care what nobody says. Oh, no, yo. He went up against Will. <clears throat> he went up against. He went up against Kareem, Kareem. Will, and Wes Unseld. Three great centers. Out, I, well, I won't say he outplayed all of them, but he held he held yeah, them. Yeah, he too. held his own and went up against them. He held them, but he did his job in holding them below their average. You know what I exactly. mean? Exactly. Like, he 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 raised his game. He he. That's what he did. He raised his game. So some level. can say. So some can argue that he is also because I'm not gonna lie. When you when you hear about great centers in the league. You rarely hear Willis Reed's name in the conversation. It's usually the same old names. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, um, Will Chamberlain, Shaq, Hakeem, Russell, Hakeem. Patrick, never, of course. You never hear Willis Reed. And he oh, and gave these guys problems. Yeah. And for the record, for the he whole may not have, his problem is I'm guessing the accolades. I'm assuming that's that's where he lacked. I would say so. I would say that because like everybody else's accolades, who he outplayed in them playoffs, maybe aside from West Unsold, I would assume theirs are equal. Um, they pretty much outdo him as far as the accolades go. But overall, for the seventy playoffs, twenty four points, thirteen boards, two point eight assists. That's six more points than his career average. Called, talk about raising your game clutch it doesn't yo cl listen you're born you're either born for it or you're not i'm not gonna lie some were just the chosen ones and my man was the chosen one because <laughs> what he did was movie moving like if you lived through that god bless your soul if you were there and you were able to i i oh my god man i, I wish oh bro what would I you wish, say would be what would you say would be the closest thing that you had in your lifetime to the to the to a Willis Reed moment? Um, when Iman Shumpert threw down a dunk in the Eastern Con was it Conference Finals? I think when it was probably round two. When round, we played the Pacers, round yeah, round two. Yeah, when we played the Pacers. Um, that's the most iconic thing I I could think of because I was there. So, but maybe Melo. Against the Bulls. Oh, yeah. On, on um the shots, the two shots. What was that Earth Day? To tie, to, to tie the game and the one in overtime. Yeah. The Mike Breen. <clears throat> Bello for three. Bang! He puts it down. Uh, that's that's pretty iconic, too. Uh, I guess my, mine would be the game seven when we beat the Pacers and we went to the finals. 
See, yours, yours iconic is so much better than mine, bro. I got some. Oh, this is not fair, man. This is some VS. I was born in the dirt. I'm still in it. I'm still in it, Stevie. <laughs> Yo, you got to, you got to witness the finals with your eyeballs. I have never seen the finals. Yeah, I, at least I'm in, I'm lucky in that aspect. I'm so sad, Stevie. Your time is coming. Yo, I would. Yo, oh my God, today. Yo, oh, I would. I would actually. I'm not gonna, Stevie. I'm gonna keep it a buck. I would cry. I'm not gonna lie to you. I would actually shed tears if I see the finals. Let alone win it. Win it, I wouldn't be alive. You will see me in the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Dead ass. No, I'm not. Yeah, no, no, no. If we win, it's over. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's over. But uh, okay. I'm glad we got all that positive energy up in the air and in our systems because wait for it, New York. Let's come back to reality. <laughs> Can we keep it short, man? Because this is going to suck. Because the first episode was so inspiring and cool, and now we got to get into, like, the present. What was it called? Vic <laughs> it was so cool. Bro, it was so cool going back to the past that we didn't even live in. Now we got to come back here. You know? <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I felt like I was there going through this whole thing. I'm not going to yeah. lie. Oh my god, unfortunately we're here, Stevie. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Sweet Jesus. But we gotta do it. Um, you know what? Oh my god. I wish it was all sunshine and rainbows, but yo, listen, being a Nick fan, it is not that at all. At all. This is why it's I'm not, not gonna lie. It's like, never easy. It's being never a easy. being a Nick fan is like some there's some teams like there's some teams you can be a fan of because they're gonna be automatically good. Then being a Nick fan, it, you got to be, like, born into this. I said it many times. This is not a casual fan thing to be in. This is not. There's nothing casual about Knicks because you're not going to enjoy yourself if you're being casual. You got to be invested. <laughs> you have to be. There's no yeah. other way because you're not going to have a good time at all. I'm invested, and I don't have a good time a lot of the times. But since I'm invested, you know, I make the best of it. <laughs> But, I have you know, to. I, but I, like, I, I, I was born into it. I can't leave now. now I've been nah, you, too much. I'm not gonna lie, Stevie. I I, I don't want to hear it. You saw the finals. I'm not gonna lie. I, that kind of hurt my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, point, let's just get into it, man. Uh, we went 0 and 3. Okay, this wait, week. wait, wait. Hold on, wait, wait. Hold on, Stevie. I want to get into want... it. Man. I want to get it over with. I just want to clear something up, though. Real <laughs> I want to get this over with. This I, I I agree. I agree. I just want to clear something up. Look it. We are not shitting on put a quarter. We're not, you know, taking a dump on. This because we we know we know where we've been and we know where we are right now. We're doing good. You know, I have no really no big complaints on what's going on right now. We're just saying we could have be better. We have, you know, better days, especially with what the WTF we're gonna be talking about right now. So this this week was just ugly, bro. Like it, so, our, our play wasn't good. Like overall. You know, here's the thing, y'all. We usually break the games down game by game. But each game looked like it had the same problem. So we're just going to put it all in one. We keep going to go right through it with y'all today. Yeah. Because... So we're going to we're going to we're going to we're going to go straight through it. We're going to give we're going to give the those points and then I'm going to bring up some specific stuff from each game just to sprinkle that in just to give it some little flavor cuz I got some stuff to talk about that happened and you already know where I'm going with that Stevie. You already know what's about to be talked about. Um so first thing on the list we got Actually, I was just going to go. Yeah, I forgot. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm too excited right now. Um, I'm not. <laughs> no, I still got the pause. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to come down eventually. Oh, it died. Mine's died already. Like, I'm already like, <laughs> I my, came back down to earth. Mine's it coming down. It was fast, too. Like, I wish I'm, I like, was I'm like sliding down. Like, you know when you like grab tighter to like the pole and you just slide down slower? Like, that's that's me right now. I'm not. I'm fighting it. I got to just let like, go and... I can't yeah. fight it no more. I can't, I can't, you know, whatever. So, okay. The main issue in most of these games is the fact that we allowed our opponents to play their game. And we were forced to... Because I'm not going to lie. Our offense has not been the problem at all. This as it, Just like in the beginning of the year when we had problems. These same problems that we displayed this week. <laughs> That's a great observation there, Stevie, because I didn't even think about that. But, yeah, the main problem is the defense. We are allowing our opponents to get into their strong suits and strong habits, and they are letting us have it. I mean, yo, to be to be specific, 
So I already know where you're going. You, or at least I think I know where you're going. Let me see. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Oh. <laughs> um. What's this dude's name? Something. That I knew it. Told me on Prince. <laughs> I knew it. I was right. Listen, that's what, bro. That's what stuck out last week, bro. There's no disrespect to Tori on Prince. Cause... Oh, it's, it's no big disrespect. Do you know how no, much no, no, he no. averages? Do you, you know why. how much he, he has... averages? I'm a... What is the average? Go ahead. Nine points. I'm, but I'm going to tell you why there's no disrespect at my end. Because I don't know if you remember Tori on Prince, but he was on those Hawk teams that had um Teague, Kyle Korver, Millsap. Remember those Hawk teams on that team coming off the bench? Yes. He showed he showed promise one year, but didn't really like capitalize on it. So I'm not really mad that he went off. It's just how he went off. Stevie, I'm furious. I can't agree with you on that one. He scored 35. No, points. no, I'm, I didn't say I wasn't mad. Again, I said I'm not mad he went off. I'm he mad literally, at how he went off is he what I'm mad at. Literally missed one shot the entire game. And it wasn't a three. That's the funny part. He literally okay. So you can look at this game half full or half empty. Nah, half 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 empty, bro. Because we should not have lost to them. They did not have Ant Man. Wait, should hear me out. Hear and me we out. got killed by like, Go Bear. Hear me out. Wait. <laughs> the hell, babe. <man? laughs> wait, 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 wait. No disrespect to Go Bear because a lot of people don't like him, but I actually like him as a sensor. He should not have killed us, bro. One second, hold on. Let me hear me out, Stevie. I know we angry. I get it. Just hear me out for a second. The half empty is that we let Tarion Prince score 35 points and not miss a single shot. Right? That was horrible. He was looking like Oh, he missed Curry. one shot. Sorry. He was looking like Curry, Clay Thompson, Reggie Miller, Ray Allen, maybe Shooter. He was looking like the Okay, wait, wait. <laughs> now the half full is that uh -oh. it took that to beat us. I Yes. You, you get what I mean? Hold on. Wait. Yeah, I mean, that's a good way to look at it, bro. But again, the, cho the choice is yours. I'm just giving you the option. I see it the same way as you. This was the, this was disgusting to look at. Oh, you're, talk <laughs> you're talking about for them, for everybody watching. I'm talking about, for, yeah, yeah. That's I, to I gave y'all the blue pill and the red pill. I just wanted y'all to, to know there's options. So, but the results are the same that this needs to change. This is not okay. Yeah, bro. Like, that should give me a headache, dude. Oh, my God. God. And we were closing the gap, and he was the one to put the dagger in it, like that piece of. I'm not. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there. Um, the refs, the refing sucked this week too. I don't know what it is, bro. I don't. And it's not just the Knicks, bro. H have any of y'all noticed in all sports lately? I'm gonna keep my eye on baseball this year too to see if it's for them as well. But like football and basketball, like the refing has sucked. Well, I can't speak for the other sports, but I know why it sucks in the NBA specifically. It's because um, there's a lot of rookies. Like, all the old veterans are retiring or retired. There's, like, only, that way. There's only one set of, like, veteran squads, which they have been effing up, too, not for nothing. I'm not going to lie. They're not safe either. But for the majority of the league right now, it's mainly rookie refs. So, because I know, I know people aren't happy at all, because I know the Mavericks are on a protest whatever about <laughs> oh boy yeah i didn't whatever. know that yeah they're on protest for a call that didn't happen or something something like that i don't know we got like Just, pitchforks and torch <laughs> i don't know bro when <laughs> no, i heard that's that not <laughs> that's not a protest that's actually just... that is a protest these days <laughs> you're gonna see luca with the <laughs> Yo, speaking of Luca, let me I'm stop. Not, let me stop. Let me oh, stop. Yeah, let me stop. no, I gotta finish. Now you started it. Listen, he's <laughs> he's not happy in in Dallas, man. So I don't know. We could we could leave that in the air. I mean, we do have. I, I, I'm cool with that. We have the lottery protected pick. So if that pick is, if I'm not mistaken, if the pick is ours, if it's 11 and up, but if it's 10 and below, I think it's theirs. I could be wrong though. Don't quote me on that. But we're definitely somewhere in there. We could definitely get that pick. Um, so historically, there was some history that night. Randall dropped 57 points. Uh, he was the first Nick to drop 50 points since Carmelo Anthony. Dude, you know what's crazy? Like, I was so mad we lost that game. I actually forgot he dropped 57 points. Yeah. And Randall is uh I got in my notes. He becomes the eighth Nick in history to have a 50 plus point game. Melo, 
Ewing. <sighs> Damn it. Bernard King, Allen Houston. I don't know who the other four are. Nick's 50 point game. Nick's 50 point game. Richie Gerwin, Willis Reed, Bernard King, Patrick Ewing, Allen Houston, Jamal Crawford, Carmelo Anthony, Julius. Oh, Randall. Jamal Crawford had one. That's right. I forgot about that. Yes, sir. Shout, uh, out, to, shout, out, shout out to Jay Crossover. It's a good, it's a good little, it's a good little lineup right there. And Willis and that, Reed, wait, wait, and the Patrick, man, the man we wait, just wait, talked Patrick about. Patrick Ewing, wait, wait. You said that was a good lineup. Hold up. Patrick Ewing, Willis Reed, Bernard Richie, King, Richie Allen Houston. Irwin. So who would be the point guard? Mello. No, Randall. <laughs> I guess he could run the point forward. I'll take it. I'm with it. <laughs> They're going to lose because of that. Anyway, we're going to get into the reason why, but whatever. But now nah, back to the games, man. Like I, 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 I just forgot that he dropped fifty-seven because I was so bad we lost these three games. Um, it was good and it was a very efficient one too. A very efficient fifty-seven points. He shot nineteen to twenty-nine and eight of fourteen from three. So, and percentage-wise, for my percentage people out there, sixty-five percent from the field and fifty-seven percent from three. If I recall, unfortunately, he did have a turnover in the end while doing the spin move, and he had four turnovers overall. That. Son of I remember guy. that. That much I remember. He had to turn over in the end while doing a spin move. Come on, Randall, man. I thought we were over that. Yo, I'm not going to lie. R Randall has to have a sit down talk with us, bro. Like, we got to, like, bro, don't spin in the double team, man. Like, if you, I don't, I'm not going to tell you not to spin because when you do it and it works, it's great. But don't do it when the double team's there. That's it, bro. Overall, the Knicks played great. Are, you know what I mean? Overall, he played great though. The Knicks are back to jump passes, Stevie. And this, I'm talking about all across the board right now. This goes this goes for all three of the games. If I see another jump pass, Stevie, you've said this before too. I yeah. have, and, and the fact that I'm still saying it is a problem because it hasn't been fixed. It's actually getting worse. They need to stop with the jump passes. I'm tired of seeing them leave their feet to pass the ball. I, they need to get Randall. Oh no, my God! Uh, jump that, passes. that is the scariest thing to see. Is Randall leave his feet? Yo, so not only is he leaving his feet, but he's leaving his feet and doing the things, Stevie. The okay, so in the air, in the air, <laughs> in the air. <laughs> he's doing the okay in the air. Come on, Randall, man. We love so that, you, bro. So Remember, turns... Randall, Randall, we stick up for you, bro. And on this anonymous, we stick up for you. We also criticize you. Stop doing that. So that turns into like a... So when, so when he does the okay on the ground, it turns into like a 35% chance of him turning over the ball. If he does the okay in the air, that turns into like... 98. 98%. <laughs> okay? It's, I don't know, bro. I'm speechless. I didn't think he was going to go there. I wasn't expecting that. So, okay, look at No, wait, I knew you were going to go there because we discussed it. I just didn't think you were going to go there now. No, no, we're, 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 we're in it to win it because I'm tight. Um, okay, let's 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 just trans over to Miami real quick. This is the another problem with the Tyler us. Hero and Jimmy Butler show. Pretty it was much. actually so okay. Yeah. They're the ones that close, they're the ones that steal the deal. But I'm gonna tell you why. The Tyler Hero was, in particular. Yeah, I'm going to tell you why, though, the game was the way it went. Is because we allowed them to play their game. They have a lot of good shooters on the team, and we allowed, we allowed the Heat to go 57% from three. You're not winning a game when That's you're bad. letting a team shoot 57% from three. Shooting That's 28 bad. threes. You shot 28 threes and hit 16. Ooh, that's pretty good. Pretty you know damn I mean? good. Um... I mean, we weren't so, you know, like, uh, again, our offense isn't the problem because that same game, we shot 51% from three. Yeah, the reps kind of stabbed us in the back that game too, man. It was, it was not, the, what was the, it wasn't the heat. They did bad in the heat game, but it was the next game that they pretty much decided the game, but we're still on the heat game. We'll get to that later. Yeah. But, uh, 
all I can say about this game, bro, like one positive I can get out of it is like we kind of held Bam out of bio down a little bit con con compared to the last time. So that's a plus in my opinion. At least we know like should we meet them again? You never know. I mean, I mean we are going to meet them again. This <laughs> week is a matter of fact. That and came, I, right? I will be there actually. <laughs> oh, somebody's birthday's coming up. Oh, that's a fact. My birthday's coming up Tuesday. And he's going to the Heat game. Um, but yeah, I'd pay attention to that. So you know one thing, I mean? one thing I, I think I, the glass half full in this game for me is the the way we played against Adebayo. Um, I'm going, I'm kind of going ahead here. Pay attention to that when you're there. Okay, I think, I will, I think that'll we'll be, I think that'll be a deciding factor in that game. In that game. Uh, okay, that's that's a good take. Not for nothing. I think. I think the I think the number one thing to take out of this to, for them to fix that, and they need to stop going to the one on one offense. Yeah, we did when, that a lot this game. You people when, did that, right? When they're struggling, listen. The one on look at our offense is one on one priority. I get that, and I got no problems with that because we have guys that can do it. The problem is when you're not on. So now the now the one on one doesn't work because your offensive game is struggling. So now you have to fall back on to help either everybody else or have everybody else help you. There's no backup plan. That's the problem with our offense. Our problem with the offense isn't the offense. It's the backup plan to the offense. We don't have a backup plan. And if we do, it's not good. You know, there's there were times in this game when we were coming back, but we were coming back due to ball movement. I saw Julius Randle give it to Grimes. Grimes gave it back to Julius Randle. Julius Randle drove, kicked out to Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson opened for a three. That's what I'm talking about. That's what you got to do. The whole dribble till 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Because the Knicks, the Knicks don't get a lot of assists, bro. They don't. When they finish games, they don't get a lot of assists. And when they do, it's for, I, I call them forced assists. Basically, what those are is like you dribble for 20 seconds of the shot clock and you you panic passes somebody and it hits the shot that's a forced assist that wasn't a made assist i don't count those really but the knicks have a problem with team basketball and that's gonna hurt them in the playoffs they need to have a backup Reed. they need to have a backup plan like the print the the i got no problem with the main offense being the one-on-one -on -one because we know it works we need something to back that up. You know, we need to get everybody involved, you know. And the assist, dude, you know, we got to get – it's a team game, man. We just talked about Willis Reed and his team, you know. They got to they gotta emulate that somehow. Not to be that great, you know, because I don't think he'd be that great. But, you know, of that, that's that's the outline. That's the blueprint. You know, that's what you got to do to to win these games. And was it this game that he... No, no, it was the next game. But, yeah. That, they need to fix that. And let me see. And the NBA oh. needs to fix his refing. NBA needs to fix their refing indeed. There was a lot of no calls and it was just whack. But, yeah, honestly, that's what it comes down to. I don't want to talk too much about it because they're all the same for all each game. This one hurt the most, though. I'm not going to lie to you. This we game, beat, We should have beat them, bro. I'm sorry. We should, not game, have, we should not have lost to the Magic. Yeah. No disrespect. This, no disrespect to the Magic because I do. I give them in past shows. I've given them credit for having a good young team, and they are going to go places soon. Give them a year or two. But we, they're not better than us. We should have beat them. Yeah, this, this was a gut punch. This was like this was like the cherry on top for the end of the week for sure. Like, cause we were already struggling going into this game, something that we really needed to win, especially a struggling team. And that's besides the point. They're not even in the play, so they're not, they're beyond struggling. They're they're just not in the running anymore. And I even said it in the post game post. At this point, they're a team with nothing to lose. So their their primary objective now is to mess up teams like us in the standings. You know, that's their only objective is to see. Who, who they can mess up and play with. And who do you play with? The New York Knicks. Yeah. <laughs> what better team to make a statement on? You know, like, yay. You know what I mean? It, it, it's like, it's written in the stars, man. I forgot what, I forgot, <laughs> I forgot what written movie that stars. was. I forgot, I forgot what movie it was. I, I think it was called, it was, it was like a Disney movie. I think it was called like Soul or something like that. 
But I know you're talking about. That movie's actually pretty good. Yeah, and there was a scene where it was like, I've been messing with this team for years, and it's like the Knicks. I hated like that they, part. <laughs> the movie was good, but I hated that part. Listen, it's just, it's just, it's what it is. Um, so in my notes, the first thing I see is, and I quote, "Played like shit." That's literally the, <laughs> that's literally the first. <laughs> I put the quote. That's literally the first thing I have written down right here. Um, second thing I written down is Randall is a hothead and needs to find his brain. That's the game where he got it to quickly's face, right? Yes. So not good, Julius. Come on, man. Give like, me your take. Give me your take on because I have my take. Give give your take on the situation of, and how you is, feel about I, it. I agree that it was a heat of the moment thing, but it's still not a good look, bro. Especially not this late in the season. You got to have your men swim together, bro. Like I, I'm not gonna say all players argue calls. So I'm not gonna tell you not to argue calls. You're gonna do it regardless anyway. You know what I mean? Whether I tell you to do it or not. Or anybody tells you to do it. If you feel you're right about something, you're going to say it. It's just how people are. It's just, it's just humanity. But, bro. You just got to control how you yeah, say yeah, it. Yeah, bro. You got to pick your battles, man. Come on. We need you, Julius. Playoffs is near, man. We need you to be at your best physically, mentally. Physically, you there. You, you a beast. Mentally, you lose it sometimes, bro. You got to get that together. You know what I mean? Like, bad call is a bad call. It happens. I hate it, too. Hell, we just complained about it, like, three times this whole episode. Um, But, dude, you're one of the leaders of this team. You're one of our best players. You can't be the one costing us games because of mental breakdowns. You know what I mean? Um, I, Turnovers suck. I'm willing to – I'd rather us lose because of that. I hate turnovers. I hate stupid mistakes in-game. But I'd rather lose because of that than because of you flipping out for a tech. You know what I mean? Because at least I know you're playing and trying. But if you flipping out because of mental, because like you mad and it happens all the time and it's happening more often, which is why I'm complaining about it right now. And I'm, glad, I'm, glad, so I'm glad you said I'm glad you just said that. I'm glad you just said that because I don't want anybody to think we're bullying Randall for just these three games. It's been happening a lot lately, which is scary. You know what I mean? And we're getting to the postseason. We need you, bro. Like, that's all I'm saying. You know what I mean? We're not, like like he said, we're not coming at you. We're not pointing the finger at you, nothing like that. We need you, my guy. You got to be on your, your, your mental. That's all I'm saying. And I agree. I'm going to just back that up with Stevie, you know? um, My my biggest problem with Randall isn't his play. Like, whenever I have a problem with Randall, mostly it's his mental state. His mental state scares me because let's say it's game seven. First round of the playoffs. I put this in the in the in the group chat too, and a lot of people was agreeing with me on this. Let's say game seven, first round of the playoffs. Um, one minute left in the game, tie game, right? Uh, it comes down to the wire. The refs are gonna let everybody play. He doesn't get a call. What is he gonna do? Is he gonna is he gonna check out and not play for the last thirty seconds? Or you know what I mean? Like what is now? Now I'm thinking, what is he gonna do? Because he has. Not only is he get not only does he get hot headed and argumentative and physical when he's mad, but he also checks out. He has a very high tendency of checking out and bad. So I'm gonna give you some context to the part when he yelled that quickly because it wasn't just that that got me pissed off about the situation. It was the whole sequence of events that led to that. It just looked really bad. So he had got the ball and ran into a player no foul called or anything like i mean it wasn't even a foul i mean he just it just looked weird it looked like a fly it looked like he flopped and by and it's the end of the quarter dude you know what i mean like it's 0.2 seconds left it's not that serious he was just mad because he was struggling you know and that, that's understandable you know you're gonna be mad when you're struggling but this is where it got out of hand now that whole scene goes down. You look like a fool a little bit. Now you come over to the ref in the ref's face arguing with him. And then your teammate comes to check you to try to help you out so you don't get a T. You end up getting the T. And then you get into his face and yell at him. And it was what he was saying. Because when you read his lips, it was like, get off me. Don't touch me. little. You know what I mean? Like, he was really, like, little broing him. You know what I mean? Like, 
It was personal at that. I'm not gonna lie. It was personal in that moment. The way it all looked to me, it looked personal. It didn't look like, you know, I get it, like hothead, and you know, you when you're mad, you want to punch everybody in sight. But bro, you're you're in a position right now where like you are you're not a normal person. You're above average. This is why you're in the NBA. So that means you're gonna have to do above average things, meaning keeping your emotions in check, especially when you're a leader, like Stevie said, you're a leader. So it doesn't matter what you're feeling or, you know what I mean? You got to do everything in your power to make sure you do not let that spill out on the court and infect, infect everything. Because now it looks bad because it looks worse because we lost. So now you can say we lost because you lost your your head. You know, you're, you're, you're like, like what Willis Reed had effect positively on his team, what you did, because who knows what happened in the locker room after that? You know what I mean? Like, who knows if they even apologized or just kept arguing? You know, now it's an awkward situation. So I'm not here to start controversy. I'm just speaking the obvious here. You know what I mean? Like, we can easily say that was the effect of on the game, you know? And that's coming from somebody who's supposed to be our best option at winning. That's a fact. That's a fact. Um, I don't think it's that serious, though. I mean, it was a bad look. It really was. Like, because, like, I, and I'm sure I give quickly a lot of credit, though. He showed a lot of character by not flipping back. He could have. And he had every right to, in my opinion. Because I don't know, like, me first. Because I can see it from both perspectives. I've been mad like Julius Randle before. And sometimes at that moment, I don't want nobody touching me. And I don't want to hear, like, at the moment, I don't want to hear nothing. I'm sure we've all been there. But we've all been where Quickly is, too. And I'm sure a lot of us would not have taken that. He showed a lot of restraint. He gets credit for that. But um, back to Randall. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, like, I, I I guess I can't agree more. I can't have said it better myself. Um, Like I said, he just has to get it together, bro. Like, the play's great. He's playing great. He just can't let bad calls. Bro, you have to re- realize, bro, like... <sighs> Even though we're in a good position as an organization, we're st- I still get the idea that we're not a respected organization. You know what I mean? Like, he, he, Willis Reed even got disrespected this week. And the dude died. You know what I mean? Right. I don't even want to give that any burn. Yeah. I posted it on Twitter. I don't know if you saw it. Oh, shit. Yeah. It wasn't like a big level of disrespect, but it was disrespect nonetheless. I don't want to give it no burn, as I said. Because it was, it was some boneheaded shit. But um, point I was trying to make is like we we're still not a respected organization, despite the fact that we are where we are and we pretty much exceeded expectations. So, as a player and as the best player on as a, as a player, as, as, ah, sorry, <laughs> as a leader and the best player on the team, you gotta move a little different because of where you are. And it's, and it's unfortunate, being that New York is the media capital of the world, every little movement can be blown out of proportion. And we're not saying you can't feel what you feel. You just got to feel it on your own time, bro. You know what I mean? Like, you got to take that with you, dude. That's 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 the, that's the sign-up sheet of being a leader. That's, that's what it takes to be a leader. You're going to have to holster a lot of emotions, you know, because you have, you at the end of the day, you are the... The Rock, you are the link, you know, and and with our other link out, Hurt, you are the best available option right now. So now if you are losing it, everybody else is like, what are we doing? You know, so. Yep. Can't lose your way, bro. Lead us to the promised land. You can do this. And we're not scolding you. We just want you to do better. I mean, we are scolding you, like, but like we, you know, it's not for bad reason. It's not because. We want we want you to because there's some Nick fans that hate it and don't bring a solution to it. We want oh, yeah, this. No, this Nick fans that still want to trade him, bro. It's still very yeah. real, actually. I'm not gonna lie. That's a good point. <laughs> Especially what's what's going on right now. You can easily say trade Randall, but you know his his, his trade his trade value goes up every time we go on a losing streak. It's almost scary how dependable Brunson is needed. Uh, not necessarily. It just shows that we actually have a star, in my opinion. We actually have somebody we can rely on. But it's almost like when he's not there, it's over. So which leads you? Well, that's to... most start. That's more start. That's most teams with a star. So, Knicks need one more player. I'm not saying it's a star, but we need a player. 
Uh, we didn't really get to really talk about R.J. Barrett much. I kind of wanted to get into him a little bit, but I'm going to save that for next week because I just want to see where he goes before I start making any accusations. Accusations! You I was going to say that. You beat me to it. <laughs> You know, I'm going to give him one more week because he has been... One more week. There you go. I'm just kidding. There you go. There you go. There you go. Um, His his performance in this Orlando game really, really, really got me upset. I'm not going to lie to you. When when you're... I'm willing to let it slide because before that, he's been playing pretty well. No, that this is okay. I'm willing, I'm willing to let the magic game slide. Me personally, I'm gonna give him. Listen, I'm not gonna. I'm. I'm. Don't get me started. I'm gonna give him one week. That's all I'm saying about RJ. I got my. I got my beef with RJ. I'm gonna give him one more week, and I'm. I'm gonna bring it up. So get ready for that. That's gonna be the topic of next discussion again. So, uh, more RJ Barrett research this week is what you're more telling me. More RJ Barrett research. Oh, boy. I need more answers. All right, here we go again. Here we go again. And I didn't announce it, but I'm announcing it now. Nick Donovan is going to Riverside. Bing bong. For those of you who don't know what Riverside is, it's pretty much just a streaming platform that's live. So the show is going to be live from now on, which you guys can now call in and do all that stuff. So you guys are going to need a link. So that link I'm going to post, but you need... Write this down. You need a Google browser of some sort you cannot open it in safari for apple users and i don't know what android users use but you need a google browser so if you have an iphone just download the google app vice versa for google for android and if you're on a computer you got no problems so we're gonna post a link the day of the episode about five minutes before the episode actually goes live depending on how it works we're not really sure how it works yet we're gonna get to that through the week but um there's gonna be a link click it and that's it you guys will be in and how we're gonna structure it is we like to bring up topics so through each topic we'll give you know we'll open the floor for an extra like five minutes about that topic if anybody has any questions or any thoughts about that topic and then we'll just keep it moving um i guess it's time to set our warnings please yo please find it in your heart to not troll us oh my god please be sincere we are trusting our show to you please do not come into our show with some nonsense and i'm not talking about the emotions like i understand we're gonna have some episodes where people are gonna be yelling out of anger that's fine that's completely fine just keep it fact, calm. welcome it yes keep it calm with the cursing do not if you must curse just try to bleep yourself out um yeah yeah i mean you could curse a little something but don't od we trying to be a little kid friendly too yeah we're trying to yeah we we ourselves are also trying to which is why the donation system which we're pretty much on to like five dollars i think i'm not gonna lie <laughs> But, you know, we're doing our best. You know, we're trying. So all we ask is for you to also put the same effort in. Um, in terms of the respect, listen, we give respect to those who give respect back. You know, facts, keep it. Facts, facts, We may not always agree to things. Things may get a little heated, but that's also, that's that's what conversating and, you know, this is what this field brings. So be prepared to be challenged, and we are also prepared to be challenged. So, uh at the end of the day, it's all love, man. You know, we just want to be more in, uh, more with the people because we are the people's voice, TV. Facts. And we are nothing without yes. the people. Yes, he caught it. I thought he was going to miss it. Yes. Yes, TV. Of course I was going to catch that. Come on, man. Yes. And that's how we're going to end this episode. Thank you for everybody for stopping by episode 93. Links always in the description below. I am LJ. Stevie in the building. This episode was definitely on the longer side a little bit. We're at an hour and 10 minutes, but that is okay. It was a very informative episode. Yeah, and... man, I, I kind of got Willis Reed happy, and I have no problem with that. Yes, yes. And mixed... you know, I want to add something, too. Oh, you do what you got to do. About, about Willis Reed, I want to add something. Because, like, a lot of people laugh at Nick fans, you know, yeah, you only got two rings. And you haven't won a ring since the 70s. And you wasn't born. You know, you get all those jokes. <laughs> or other teams got, you know, Miami Heat got LeBron. Cleveland got LeBron. Lakers got LeBron. Kobe Magic. 
Chicago Bulls got Jordan. Uh, Houston Rockets got Elijah Wan. You know, Shaq's out there. The point I'm trying to make, and you know Larry Bird on the Lakers. The point I'm trying to make is this. Despite the fact that those franchises got all those all-time great players and those all-time great moments, I have no problem that the Knicks' greatest moment is that. I'm actually proud of that. Even though I didn't witness it. Yes, I want my own Willis Reed moment that I can tell, you know, my niece and my maybe my potential future children about. But I'm satisfied with that. Personally speaking, as a fan, I have no problem having that as my franchise's greatest moment. It's, that's a beautiful moment. I mean, we're talking Disney level quality movie moment, like you, like you said. And I, I, I back that. I always, I always quote you on that because it is one hundred percent that, like everything from from the emotions to the energy to the to the moment to the inspiration. I mean, that is a perfect moment of what an inspiring person is. You know what I mean? That's like the perfect representation of what's of being bigger than something actually means. You know, he was bigger than the game at that moment. He was the game. You know, he he was the deciding factor. And moments like that are what sports and miracles are all about. That's what life is all about in general, man. Like he That too. On... That too. Life. That shows perseverance, dude. And what does everybody want to do in life? Persevere and succeed. And Exactly. And what did Willis Reed do that day? Persevered and succeeded. He came, he saw, conquered. Conquered and kicked ass, dude. And that's how we <laughs> end the year. Just like that. 